Our next guests have been impressing critics and fans alike with their funk and reggae-influenced rock music, performing the song The General from their new documentary DVD, Under the Radar. Please welcome Dispatch. It was a decorated tale with the heart of gold that likened him to all the stories he told. A past battles won and lost and legends of old. A seasoned veteran in his own time. On the battlefield, he gained respect for fame. With many medals of bravery and stripes to his name. And grew up near as soon as he could to cover the scars on his face. Now he serves his men on. But on the eve of a great battle with the infantry, and Jimmy the old general tossed in his sleep, arrested with his spinning wheel. Well, from the night to tell what he had seen, and walked slowly out of his tent. All the men held tall with their chests in the air, with the courage and the blood and the fire in their stare. It was a great morning, and they all wondered how they would flare. The old general told them to go home. You know, I really played soccer a lot, and but I got ankle injuries, so that's when I started playing guitar, and I was all right, you know, but I liked songwriting. I was writing a couple songs, and then I went over to see Brad. And I remember the phone ringing, and um, this kid's like, yeah, I can come over right now. And he just ran over to my dorm room, and we started playing together. And then he was in a band with Chad at the same time for maybe two or three months, and Pete was always trying to pull Chad into me and pull me into Chad. And I'd say, to Brad, you know, this this guy Chad, I want to get him together. And, and I figured if we brought Chad in or tried to be more than what Pete and I were, that maybe we'd get all screwed up. Brad, this, this is your pedal board? Does it weigh twice as much as it should? Yeah. You would like a guitar wizard? There's not as much stuff in there as you think. The guy who uh, built it was like, sorry, I kind of went overboard on all the hardware, so it weighs like 100 pounds. And there are no wheels. I'm like... <laughs> I don't have a crew anymore. <laughs> you know, I was open to it. I think Brad heard it, heard maybe we played one of my songs and, and Brad actually liked it. And then, and he also, we did some three parts and, and sang together. Remember this old guy, hon? Oh yeah, how's hey, she doing? Pretty good, couple scary moments on stage. I remember one of our first meetings, we were in like a stairwell playing guitar and I think Brad was sort of like, who is this dude with, you know, missing two strings on the guitar and it was, Guitar was out of tune. Um, a couple this, of times this will fuzz out on me. Yeah. Mid, mid show. Right, which will and be cool so for the big what, show. This is what I do. This is what I do during the show. Right. And the crowd fucking loves it. Oh. It's great. <laughs> Music falls to shit. Right. People it's, start walking out. Yeah. I'm like crying down here with my pedal board. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? It's so real. It to is. me, Brad was like Pete's friend, who was a, a couple years older, and. Um, I knew Brad could sing harmonies really well. I didn't know I didn't know anything about him except that. Yeah, it's just, it's yes. just a delay on a delay. Right, yeah, you can play off So it, there's no delay. Know. One cancels the other you one You should guess three. Yeah, there's no delay. This you defies, need three, five, or seven. This defies all time. That's crazy. It's so, you're making timeless music. Why are we even practicing? I'm gonna be far. <laughs> Right? Yeah!
How are you? <laughs> Pete. Hi. Nice to meet you. Were you guys like music majors or? I was a dropout. <laughs> oh, it's so not true. Oh, he, you're he, an, you're he was an a very good student. Uh -huh. I was there for a year. He was a star half. student at both Middlebury College and, and star and, student. And he wasn't challenged there, so he went to NYU. And he didn't even finish there. At NYU? It wasn't hard enough. It wasn't hard enough. <laughs> no, I say, this is what I say. I say, don't let school get in the way of your education. That's what Mark Twain said. At, I was, con ah. when I got to New York, I concentrated on music's role in revolutions. Oh. Ah. Yeah. Wrong. Ah. Wrong. Wrong. Wrong answer. So is this like really, really the last concert? Well, for a, for a, a while, <laughs> as, as you've heard Chad say, no, for that's a what while. I said. life that's can be a stream. Said after, that's what I thought after the Kilborn show. It's a trickling stream. Now, <laughs> if, life is a trickling if stream. If you want to ask that question, so for a while. now, yes. We've been a band for eight, nine years or whatever, and now we're having this huge sort of uh, celebration, I guess, sort of culminating in this outdoor free show. So what if we came in on a blimp? The real gamble of it is how many people will come. Chad, this is Rob Curtis. He's going to be working security with, with Dave. How are you, sir? We tried for bigger arms. I know you're <laughs> I think we're the most afraid of security stuff. You know, like, if, if even one kid gets really hurt, you know, beyond just, like, the typical concert bumps and bruises, then, then we blew it. How many people are supposed to be here? It's 10 to 100,000, right? It's going to be 50 or more. It Bro, will be 50 or more. And there's room for 15 fit, right there. How are you going to fit 50,000 people in there? That's why you're here. All right. We have, I that need to take him aside. So we need to talk a little bit. Very much why I, you're here. I called the FBI this morning. They're going to send me an agent that day to go do a walkthrough with me. And okay. kids are driving right. in from, you know, all allocated. corners of the country and uh, flying in from overseas. And I mean, if it's our last show, they want to be there in the venue. They're not going to be on a picnic blanket way out on one of the islands or on the footbridge. The challenge for me is just to, uh, I just want to put on a good show and be a tight band and, and, and give these people who, who came from however far, like, give them what they deserve. I want to get, I want to get, at the end of the show, I want to get passed in a boat all the way down to the river, and then they put us in very nicely, and we roll off into the sunset. And that's the last you ever heard of Chad, Brad, and Pete. <laughs> Chad doesn't want to play anymore. He says that it's not as maybe romantic as it was at the beginning, you know, when we were, uh, first started playing with, uh, you know, first started playing with Wim in, in Wimpy and recording, and it was very pure. Yeah, a little mossy, huh? From when? No, he's only he hasn't been. She, she's definitely a. Wimpy, our van, has always been sort of the main symbol of the three of us. We played a couple of college gigs. I think the first year we got started away, from, you know, in the Northeast, close to Millbury, and then people started coming. To it. People started showing up and liking it. Uh, we were like, okay, it just sort of snowballed. I don't think anybody really thought we were anything more than just a couple of hackers trying to to get their start. So to me, it was like, I'm going to prove this. Like, it'll be such a cool thing to, we'll show them, we'll show them what we've got. 
and we bought a PA. I was probably in the band, the one who was just like, whoa, here we go, okay. I loved it. it was, there were no answers and there wasn't any real support. No labels took us seriously. We would do anything to, to play and to, we'd drive through the night and we would do whatever. There remained an excitement for a long time. We'd gotten in touch with Sean, and he, I guess, had become a fan of our band through Napster, seeing how many kids have been downloading some of our songs. So we connected up there, and then he's just a kid. I mean, he's 20, he was 21 at the time, 20 or 21, and he's kind of like a deer in the headlights, you know, I mean, sitting in front of the Senate. I mean, it was crazy. So I think we all kind of felt like we were a team for a little Music while. The internet. the internet needs a simple and comprehensive solution similar to the one that allowed radio to succeed. What, what made Napster amazing is that one person who has a certain taste could go and share something with the rest of the community and it was instantly available to everybody. So what happens is you end up with uh, a, a sharing system that's based on quality music and less on stuff being pushed, pushed at you from radio or MTV. The reason Dispatch is amazing uh, is it wasn't really a fluke. The music is great and they've, been, they've worked really hard. They toured, they played a lot of small venues. But the problem is they still didn't have access to a distribution system. And once Napster came around, because they had great music, it was able to propagate out to people in areas that they had never played where they don't have CDs in stores. They'll show up in Syracuse one night for a show. They've never been there, and there'll be 500 kids singing every, every word of their every song. You're, you're like, hey, how do, how do you guys know this music? We, you know, we have maybe 20 copies of the record in, a, in an indie record shop, yet there's five, you know, there's hundreds and even thousands of kids showing up. Again, I, there's no better example than this. Whatever Napster was, like, Dispatch was a band that blew up through file sharing. Recording Artist Coalition believes that Congress should examine the possibility of expanding artist performance rights to include interactive services. We're like music behind music Alanis music Morissette music and then behind Don time. Henley and Demand. Chuck D sitting right in front of us. Uh, I mean, it was surreal, just all these big wigs and famous people talking all the talk, you know what I mean? I'm sitting in the Senate Judiciary Committee hearing room. There's a hearing that is primarily about Napster and the record industry's efforts to get rid of it. At that time, you know, it's, it's, it's too bad that we didn't do a better job of embracing and managing the technology at the time. I like stuff like that, like, you know. Like seeing you dressed up as a cowboy or something. Hot. Sun's been throwing a mean glare. And then for we'd be lions for alias. Hey, 
Snorty pig in it. Yeah, warthog. Pumba. Warthog. It's like a spiritual song. Have you guys, we can, uh, we're not trying to have a little, you know, fun. Remember? Yeah. That? Well, you know what? If you want to dress as a kukuranga, <laughs> that's fine. But I'm just gonna go simply as a kanzis. Show you this tune, see what you think. It's, it's sort of, it's sort of newer and it's sort of simplified. All right, for all intensive purposes. Yes, that has. As 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 I was. So you you hearing drums and bass and stuff? Or? Yeah. Okay. You know I would never bring a song that. But I know, I, didn't I bring know, drums I know. But you've changed a lot, so I? I'm just trying to be open here. Okay, so. This is the plan. Wow, it's I've always wanted to get into your head. Come on in. Lord knows we could work it, work it, work it thin. through. Work it thin. Through. I'm not, and I'm not talking about the band. Lord knows we could work it through. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, uh, t totally understood. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah. I, uh, You're telling and me. And then at the end, we punch. And somehow we'll get it. Hey, everything gets in the ground. knocked back after the first one. We'll go ahead and go. And we're gonna be over. I'm a man. Got nothing to show for my work in the ground. Go ahead and go. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and go. I read on me over. But it ain't the bitch that I'm falling down. I did see it. <laughs> uh, big fan, yeah. Yeah, have been. I've watched him uh, grow up and develop in the barn there. So. And actually got my whole family hooked on their music. So. Hey, how are you? Good. Hungry? I hope so. We've been cooking all afternoon. Yeah. 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 No. She got a mole and it's still alive. But it's gone. You can't eat that. Please, no? You're a gardener, Mouse? Yeah, I'm talk to her. Oh, you're going to talk to her and tell her not to do it? Okay. So, Sandra, is it all from art class? Yeah, from art. Oh. And this is, <clears throat> this is what I make. And this is <clears throat> my comic book. What's your favorite kind of cookbook? Oh, Chowder, my favorite. <laughs> Me too. You like Chowder? Yeah. We used to call him Chowder. We used to call him Chowder. That was my nickname, <laughs> Andrea. And this is Chef. Chowder. Yeah. There we go. How's yeah. that? Thank you. Way to go, Dre. You guys have meant so much to my family. It's so important. Oh. I'm not kidding you. You don't know how special you are to them. Thank you. So it was really a joy to have you. I can't wait yes. to come see you now. I ride a tear through this world and disappear. I ride. Through this world and disappear. Well, then what? I, can we? What about no guitar? Is there a. It's always hard. It's so great when you're like right on top of each other's ears and singing it and you feel the rhythm. Sing that part, Pete, just a second. Let me show this place so it does. I ride a tear. This world then disappear. Not for the chorus, but just maybe for the verse. I ride a tear through this world then disappear. We heard anything from the band? One of us is always waiting. Maybe two of us. <laughs> Usually we're waiting around, sitting in our cars, getting mad. This is, I, I hope they get a flat tire. <laughs> I don't know what's up. I talked to them like 20 minutes ago. So when they say they're on their way, or when I say I'm on my way, that means the window is 15 minutes to an hour. <laughs> So we'll see. Naked pictures? No, never. We don't do that. <laughs> well, uh, we don't allow swimming here. Okay. Sorry about that. That's okay. I'm drying off now. I won't get back in. We're out of trouble. We're swimming in the lake without permission. And she's like, naked pictures? And I'm like, oh, really? I'm like, no, not yet anyway. And she goes, you're really not supposed to swim. So she was cool. Oh, yeah. Go for today. We're gonna to get some more practicing and thinking of doing some recording too. Um, this is the this is the studio where we recorded Bang Bang, and it, um, Jack I think really 
brought the band together and really helped us um, become a tighter band. Jack is like our counselor. He was trying to, if, if we had stayed together, he would have been the reason. <laughs> So He's good at, we talk to him, you know, share with Jack. We share. Here we go. I stick loneliness, your lips, and the two corners of your eyes. Loneliness, your lips. Nice. Loneliness, your lips. Yep. You'll never get that on stage. Let's do it. Loneliness. <laughs> <laughs> Loneliness, your lips, and the two coins of your eyes into my pockets. We gotta break this. Your lips, comes down. Comes your down. lips. I don't know if you can hear that. It's not, octave, it's actually dude. We not, were on an octave. It's actually not working. the same note. <laughs> and the thing is, I mean, you guys have been around him enough to see. It's really mystical of how you think they don't get along when you see how well they get along. And. Um, as I've always told him, he said, you know, guys down the line, you know, you will not have enough feet to kick yourselves in the ass for this. Is that a rock star or what? He's not a rock star. He's a star of rock. In a period of a year, year and a half, they jumped from playing in front of 500 people to playing in front of 3,000 to, you know, 6,000 people. All of a sudden to have, you know, everyone saying, we knew you were gonna make it, and you know, look what's happening, and promoters coming up and saying, okay, you know what this means? You know, in three months, we're gonna have you in a 7,000 capacity room, and then three months later, we'll have you in a 15,000 capacity, and then the following year, we're gonna do, you know, a small arena. These days, it's like, Spend two years on a record, release it, it gets stale at radio, and a band has to tour it playing the same songs in the same order for 16 months. I mean, it's just, it's a really stale deal. We had opportunities to sign to a major. Um, it's just something they chose not to avail themselves of. I, I liked, I love, and I'm very proud of the, the independence of this band and, the, and, and of the, the people who, who understood it. Namely, like the people who listen to the music were the only ones uh, who really, really understood us. If they had uh, pursued that path, I think there would be a lot more people who would know the band and who would appreciate the band and who would have become fans of the band. I mean, you know, this is a band that on its own plays a gig in Central Park, and, you know, that's not a small venue. I mean, I don't know the exact details, but I do know there was at one point. Um, you know, a couple years ago when they were still even on tour that they met with, I think, three labels in one day. They go, you know, here we have these records that are selling and all these songs, right? And they go, now let's record a record. <laughs> and it's kind of like, <laughs> hello? <laughs> There's 3,000 people showing up in New York. Here's a record. You want a song to put on radio? Yeah. Put it on, records. man. We never did anything that we didn't, that where we felt like our vision would be compromised and no companies were ever willing to, to give us full reign and to, and to say, we love what you're doing, Go, we're just gonna, you know, you know uh, pour fuel on your fire. Shirt up twice. <laughs> that was the funniest shit. When you did that, I was sitting over there going like, "Am I watching a movie? Is this a dream? What is he doing? Doing a helicopter? He's like a marine helicopter." <laughs> Five years of full touring. Once we actually were on a path, then it was time to decide. Okay, so how fast do we want to go? How many gigs do we want to play? You know, like. What's on the horizon? We gotta all agree on what's on the horizon. Dude! 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 Everyone's telling you, don't let go, because you finally made it. The seven or eight years were worth it. And here's the, here's kind of the American success story. Like, just 
Just ride it. Hey, listen. Looks like we're not gonna be able to have our rollerblades on the junk bunk. We're gonna put it in the den. Community living. Baby bitch. Sometimes it gets out of hand. I need to get my ears. Community living can be tough, but we'll get through. It's like, here's the band for six or seven years, and then it starts going vertically, and right as it started going vertically, we were just, we were so burned out, and we weren't getting along at all. What I want to do for you is, I want to open up more space in the jump bunk. I think it was, it, it seemed to me like family anger. That's the best way to describe it. You know, just be like, I can't, I can't stand when he, he talks to me like that. You know, or I can't stand when, um, you know, uh, he shows up late or, or he does this or he says that about my song. You know, I think it was sometimes a struggle between me and Brad, you know, like, I liked, see, I always thought that he was, you know, great at, you know, uh, harmony rhythm guitar and drums and I thought that Chad and I were the more the songwriters but you know he wanted to write songs and I found it sometimes difficult to engage in that but but as we worked on it more I tried to and it you know I don't know I think we stopped creating together like we start it became like too much of a head game to bring different songs and everyone was really defensive and so it was just like, fuck it, I'm not gonna share any songs. The other guys said the same, everyone said the same thing because it was like such a big deal, so many head games. Thank you for coming to Community Living, um, where all our needs are always met. Generations after generations always come back to Community Living for a grand old time. Grand old time. <laughs> Dang, I really wanted to do the 30th and 31st. Two night stand. Maybe it is. Make four hundred thousand dollars each, and then you know, take two years off. Did we talk about? But we could each make thirty grand. I know. In two nights. Guys. We could each make thirty grand two nights. That's nuts. It's fucking nuts. Each. Yeah. Each. I felt like I sort of saw through us a little bit. Like we weren't in it for the right reasons anymore. But I would, you know, it's hard when you're too. Friends and bandmates, you know, are like, we want to do this. You know, it's really, I have, it's hard to, it's hard to know that decisions that I make on my own reflect their lives so much, or, you know, and so that was, I hate to disappoint them. What do you want? Well, I don't really care. I mean, I think it's, I know, but I, that's the thing. It's like, I just feel like if you just tell me what you want and give me your reasons, then I can either go along with it or continue to right. give my reasons why I don't want to do it. But I just don't know what you want. And I'm just wondering at what point where it's just like, okay, you know, we, we have to move on. You know what I mean? Now, in the last, like, three years, there were times when I would get a call from Brad or Pete saying, I can't do this anymore. I kept on thinking, like, what, this is so stupid. Like, these guys aren't even talking to each other. I'm, I'm not even, like... I'm not even happy up here uh, for, you know, I'm happy some of the times, and, and I think it's important too, like, when you get on stage, you know, I, I want to I wanna be put on a good show for people and have it be a positive experience, so I'm not going to be super glum, but I would, like, finish the show and get, go, like, right to my bunk on the bus or right to the van and, like, crawl up under the seat or whatever. Not to be dramatic, but just to, like, I just needed to, I, it, it was like, just a, it wasn't a happy part of my life. He was suffering. Yeah, he was, he, um, I just don't think he felt, he, he didn't feel comfortable with the relationship with, with us. When the shit really hit the fan, like what, how did, how did we respond? Did we support each other or did we essentially just like, were we too exhausted to? 
And we weren't, we just weren't supporting each other. I mean, I think you, you clang heads in one place, and then, and then you're just like, I don't have to deal with this, you know, and you just walk away. We said that the, when the friendships fell apart, we would not do this, and we 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 didn't live up to that promise to each other. We never knew what we were. We never knew who was, you know, it was just this huge battle over every interview. Okay, so who's the lead singer? And, and we're all like, ah, oh. you know, like no one wanted to answer. Because it was a real big pride thing, you know, like who does more singing, who gets more songs on, you know, just three egos trying to figure out how to, you know, escape the room and not answer the question. Hey, Steve. This is Russell. Um, got a got a question for you about the uh, the Boston Herald interview. Are you sure they just want to talk to Brad and not the entire band? Well, I mean, uh, three well, hey, extensions. I asked them. I was like, "What do you mean they want to talk to me? They don't want to talk to the other guys?" They said, "Yeah, they requested you specifically." So I have no clue why, but that's the Herald. Uh, Pete Pete was a little just just wondering why. You know, I want to make sure that every each member of the band speaks to the press, and you know, it's easy. You know, Brad. Can, he has a dominant personality, so it's, you know, I mean, he, he can speak, you know, it's easy for Steve, him to tell Steve or Steve to tell him to do an interview. I just want to make sure that everybody, you know, we're all getting a chance to speak. To it, you oh, know. It makes no difference. We get on the phone and we go, okay. yo, we'll it's the freaking on, band, uh, make it I got fast. The, I got the phone here. Do you really not have a speakerphone? Well, I, I mean, I tech, check. Oh, wait a minute. Actually, you, you, I do you have, have a speaker right phone. Yeah, you're right. You know, as we've gotten more attention, it's a bit of, it's been a little bit recurring. And Chad will play like he doesn't care. And I can see that a little bit, but I think he does care. And I still think that it's important if I don't say something, then interviews will go by where Brad's just doing the interview. And. You know, I, I, I want people to get the perspective that it's three people speaking, that it's not just one, there's not one leader in the band, there are three. Okay, I'll, I'll tell Brad that uh, he's more than welcome to, to include the rest of the band in the interview, but, uh, but, the, sh but Perry specifically, specifically asked for him. Hello? Is this Linda? Hello. Linda? Linda? Hi, this is Brad from Dispatch. Mm, perfect. Um, we are, we're trying to hover around a speakerphone that maybe isn't working. Hold on a second. Can you hear us? No. Go get on line two. All right, we're gonna, we got the full band here in the studio. Guys, you all set? Yep, we're all set. No, I, I'd, I would prefer that the three of us have a voice in every interview because it's hilarious. Plus, you get all three of our perspectives, you know, which are so different. And, you know, in person, uh, I think a journalist thinks it's great. On the phone, it's probably overwhelming. Like, wait, who said that? What? You know, and trying to keep up with it. But the, the best times we've had have been live interviews where the three of us are together because it just turns into Monty Python. We, uh, we think we're going to change the band name to The Last Dispatch. Just to keep our credibility, you know? No, for real, we've thought about that a little bit. <laughs> And, but I, I think we we just feel we feel like we need to put for the for the sake of our own uh, individual psyches. We feel like wow we needed to put some closure on this. Brian Sayers, nice to meet you. Hey man, Pete. Pete. how are you? Nice to meet you. How you doing? Good. This is Russell. That's my friend Brian. He plays in state radio sometimes. He's gonna play a couple tunes on drums potentially for uh, so Bradigan can come up and. Along it is. 
have a feeling that by the time we get to the Somerville Theater, I think we'll be really dialed in. And then we have our full crew, and then it's like our attention span. We just don't have a really good attention span right now, but we're coming off of not having played for a long time. So slowly but surely, I think we'll get more focused. Just getting into uh, to Boston and getting dialed into the Somerville Theater, which was the first place that we really played a legit gig, you know, like the first real sellout. And I still remember it. We were scared to death. Huh? Nice. That's yours, buddy. Got the got the uh, foil ones. We can never we never used to be able to afford the foil ones. It was just incredible to see our name up on the marquee and to come in and. It was a real deal, so to be in here and rehearse for a week is gonna be awesome. Tour book. Look at that. We all made it. <laughs> it's weird, they spelled dispatch wrong. And we're playing at the Hatch Pell. Okay. The three-member band known for its colorful mix of funk, rock, and reggae, and even more so for resisting mainstream label offers. That's the Charlie. Charlie, how are you, geeks? Good. I have one was last night and then one's tonight. Ermston, the most political of the group, has campaigned for the Democratic Party with his new band, State Good. Radio. Good. He dreams of attracting some of the convention's most recognizable politicians to the concert. Is that your dream, kid? Uh. <laughs> it's your dream, Chad? <laughs> Chad, what time's this radio gig? I want to protest with you. Where's the radio playing? at the place called the Embassy. Oh, I'm there. I got a, I got a big Bush t-shirt and everything. So then you'll like, you'll go around wearing like Kerry uh, yeah, shirts after he's elected? No. Oh, just before? Yeah. What's the point afterwards? Right. Why support the, the choice, you know? Once you made it, why stick by your choice? Yeah, you can stick by it without brandishing it on your chest. What is this? And why is there a red R? For, for Republican. For resistance. <laughs> Chad, we've been resisting mainstream label offers. We are the Yet selling more than 350,000 records. I thought, I thought we'll we were up to 650. At 700,000, I think. <laughs> Corrigan, Ermston, and Heimbold, the three friends from Middlebury College, are a Boston music circuit success story. So is Kerry going to be here tonight? No. No. Okay. But your friend Bill Clinton's going to be here. Bill is going to be there. Is he going to play sax? Democrat 
It's coming, yeah! <laughs> Have some fun this evening. Yeah. Chatty, call us and let us know. Yeah. All Your leader is going to speak now. Everyone, turn off your mind. You're listening to a raid on the state of yours, a democracy in crisis. So, Chad, we were talking about an idea about for the opening of the show. Okay. What, and for this show or the for the for hatch. The, the hatch? Okay. Because, you know, going along with the theme of hatching. An egg. Yeah. We were thinking if, the, if we, if, I don't know, if we, tell me if you like this or whatever, but if there was an egg that we made out of, e like, either a tent, you know, you spray paint it, so it's like a white egg, okay. and then we have little sperms, like little wrapped up in, like, running in to the egg like this you know and the egg lifts up and we go right into the first song where are we, are we we're sperms? inside the egg oh, we're already inside the egg. yeah Ooh, i like that i mean it's, it's one idea yeah. <laughs> You gotta meet the boys. Yeah. Chad and Brett. Hey, man. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, man. Thanks for coming. Sure, man. Where did you come from? Uh, Portland, New York. Okay. You look beautiful. All right, well, we're psyched, man. We're putting the set list together. You gotta see. It's gonna be nice. We're in here? Yeah. I'm gonna check it out, man. Check it out. Hey, my heart's over here. Oh, sorry. Match up your <laughs> yeah. Okay, Brad. Sorry. We need to make a decision. I'm at the Somerville Theater. You can come by here and meet me. We need the morning to get everything set up. Hopefully you guys can start rehearsing again at noon. Rehearse till 4. Bottom line is they're doing a rehearsal show. We just know that it'll be hilarious. If they just decided today. They're like, what yeah, about if crazy. we just add it's another show? Because it's our last week. We might as well go nuts yeah, and have right? everyone come. I vote 20. What do you vote? I'm 20. What do you vote? Uh, well, there's people who are blitzing the Harvard Square, but it would be it would be cool if you could meet me here and I'll give you all the stuff. 
There's no difference, you guys, in the perception of 20 versus 25 bucks and all we've done for But two I gotta weeks pay for these musicians' hotel rooms. No shit. <laughs> and I'm like, so I'm gonna vote bucks. 25, man. Yeah. Okay, so then, so then it's 25. 25. There's $25 a ticket at the Somerville, and um, we just need to spread the word. Email it, call everyone you know, whatever you can do, and I'll have a comp ticket for you at the door. Come meet some of your awesome reps. You guys awesome reps. reps. <laughs> we build relationships with people. We introduce people, connect them, create a family, a community of people all over the world. And that's really what Dispatch has done. And those kids will dedicate day and night working for free to make sure that this mission of succeeding and following a dream happens. I think we'll do 500 meters. We do. And for a dress rehearsal that we just announced, listen to this one. This phone number? Yeah. It's the Somerville Theater. No. It's some old lady. No, no, no. The phone number on the flyer is belongs to some old lady. So she's not happy, to say the least. <laughs> dispatch? Have you guys heard of Dispatch? Chad, don't wear that shirt. Please. State radio gigs one thing, but I mean, like, that's not necessarily how I feel. I don't know what Pete's position is. I like but I like Bush. You I mean, being up there like wearing a no Bush shirt and the rest of us not taking a political stance makes it seem like our whole band is. I, I'm more comfortable with, with no platforming rather than, you know, like if you come out and make a huge statement, then it's kind of like we either don't say anything or what are we going to do? I, do you, are you going to vote for him? I'm not voting for Kerry. Are you voting for George Bush? I'm not voting for Kerry. Are you not going to vote at all? I'm going to vote. Yeah. Does that mean we're not playing tonight? Yeah. I'm not no, happy no. with either of them. Got my back to the fire, but it ain't the biggest that I'm falling down. One of the things that was tricky with Dispatch was, was sort of the, our different viewpoints and, and uh, um, you know, Brad with his faith, or me with my politics, and, and Pete with his um, more maybe uh, relationship type uh, musings. I mean, there, there, there have been times, you know, I mean, I think um, I had a really, a pretty heartbreaking time with Pete once. Because Pete had this one lyric that Brad didn't think was appropriate. There was a song called Burning the River that I wrote, and I remember this very intense argument we had. And, you know, they were somewhat, they're lyrics that, you know, about a woman lying in bed, you know, feeling her hip bone. And I remember he didn't feel comfortable with that kind of thing. Usually you stay away from lyrics. It's just too personal. But Brad said, uh, I'm not comfortable with that lyric. And Pete was like, whoa. He was like, so he did, Pete was like, you know, you can't say that, or who are you to say that, or he, he according, I think in Pete's eyes, Brad sort of overstepped a bound, boundary there. I'd say maybe when we were really starting to hit the snags that where, where each one of us went to try to find solace and to try to make sense of the, the hardship. And I mean, I definitely went to the Lord. You know, like I went to my family and I went to my faith. Um, and I think that was probably a, I think it was a beautiful thing for me and it was probably a, a struggle for the other guys if, if and when there were moments where, um, if that was public, they probably didn't want anything to do with it, you know? It's a cross, but it's like, you know, what is that? What's that all about? So I was, uh, you know, I'd like to, you know, I always wanted to wonder with Brad, like, what is that about? You know? Yeah, we are, in fact, as our badges show, early fans, right? We, we were with them all the way, and they've been terrific from the very beginning. 
good fun, creative kids. I, at times I've said, uh, gee, why don't just kind of look at this as a job? And, uh, you know, at, at work, sometimes you don't get along with people. But uh, you can't say that about the music business. It's, it's, a, it's a great accomplishment, I think, for these guys to have done what they've done. Yeah, yeah, no other bands do this. Unsigned bands just don't do what they did. What was it two and a half years ago? They sold out uh, Roseland. Tickets were being scalped, I understand. And it's the only time an unsigned band has ever done that. Uh, and uh, to play before thousands of fans, and when you go out on the stage to have them knowing the words of the songs, I think that's terrific. Uh, excuse me, Band Dad? Hey, excuse Band Dad! Me. Hey, Band Dad! And I'm joking around. Granddads? Step into our office. Granddads are granddads. Isn't this film about? Guys, think you can just step in and get on camera? Oh, my word. They're here. I'm in the water. I'm just on camera. Just preempting the whole. Joseph, where's Colton? All right, here we go. Here it is. Here we go. Okay, This is the gene pool. What should we sing, guys? This is the gene pool. Where's Janine? She's been summoned. She's been summoned. Oh, yeah. Look at that. It's a whole nine yards. Bats in the belfry. I'm in the kitchen boiling society. I'm in the open catching all the leaves. We all see what we want. Now, Chad, what does that mean? <laughs> It's too, it's too, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's really deep. Just waking up. Hardcore fans have already arrived. Late for this badge. We're kind of late. <laughs> no, this one's going to get, this one's a good one. Oh. On way to dispatch concert. Dude, who's gonna, who's ever gonna try to take us? That's good. Last night we brought a tent and we slept on the island over there so we could get here really early and get really good spots. And then this is a line for shirts. Okay, we gotta speed up because that line goes for about four blocks. Alright. Hi guys. I guess. I don't know. We've traveled quite a distance to come to this concert, and you might ask yourself why. And it's not for the women, it's not for the fame, it's, it's for the love of the game. They said it, if you, if you build it, they will come. And you've built it, and we've come. We're just happy to be here with you. God bless. It's for people waiting in line for dispatch. All this sweat hours just to get one second of time with them. Amazing, I'm so excited. You like this batch, I love you. I love who we living for. I love Bang Bang. I love Side of Steeples. I love Got the Van. Dude, you guys are the best. I love you, man. I love you. Yeah. Hey, make one more out, please. Just one more. It's worth it. Trust me. Came here without a place to sleep. Pretty much just looked around, we found a spot. We did it for dispatch. Hey, cameraman's in my way. <laughs> I'm honestly really sad because I'm gonna have to spend the rest of my life looking for the second best band in the world. It's like a soundtrack to my life. This view right here, man, this is what it's all about. Like, I don't know if they knew really how big this was gonna be. Then shut down the highway and there's still it's flooding. There's no more waters, there's only water for the band. So we can have an emergency person try and get more.
two guys and they're going they're going who, who are you guys what's going on because they're like I got 15 men and there's 70,000 kids out there <laughs> they're like and we, go, we tried to tell you like you know we permitted we said this many people be coming but you didn't believe us and they're like who is this batch like, who are they I had no idea Thing thrown up on the wall today. The uh, Go Now You Are Forgiven with the silent steeples. Go Now You Are Forgiven. That's a good one. Hey, guys. Yeah. Exactly. Right? Where are you from? Africa. South Africa? That's not close by. <laughs> Thanks for being here, buddy. Sure. Basco from Portugal. Basco from Portugal? Brad from the United States. <laughs> Brazil. Brazil? Nice to meet you. People from Denver. From Canada, a lot of people from Canada, every province of Canada is showing up. People from Czechoslovakia and Australia. Wimpy the van. Yeah. 
I feel like a new person. I think that the band is, uh, it just feels um, fresh again. You know, there's certain moments that when we first started playing where it, there was like magic and there was no sense of time. I felt like riding the biggest wave and just trying not to fall. Knowing this thing, I mean, it just constantly felt like something could go wrong or that everyone, there's so much energy, so much momentum, so much speed. And I think we were just kind of holding on for, holding on for dear life throughout the whole show. I was thinking we were going to be lucky to have 30,000 or something. Uh, it turned out to be 110. That's a little hard to wrap my head around and that many people, so I was, I was pretty nervous, especially for the beginning part of the show. All of a sudden, new things like new flowers bloom. You don't even expect, you see new colors. And you let go, all of a sudden you let go and something else comes up. I didn't know that, I'm learning. She stands, stooped over by the fire outside. I don't see a voice, and when they look up, you know I think they got their mother's eyes. Cause she looks so proud. She looks so proud. She looks so happy. She looks so happy. She looks so proud. She looks so proud. She looks so happy. She looks so happy. I'm not tired of the whole thing like I was two years ago when we got off the road, you know. It's, not, it's a different kind of thing, but I think uh, there's parts of it when I'm on stage or when we're going through the everyday, the sort of existence of being in this band again that I'm like, oh yeah, this is, this is why I don't like this kind of complicated life. He's a mystery to me, but he'll always remain one of my best friends. You know, he came out of the blue as like a savior in one part of my life where I was like, who am I gonna make? I need a friend, man. And then there he was, but he, you know, he's a tap dancer. He's, he's got a lot of moves. I don't, I don't think Chad will want to do more than this. Um, and if he doesn't, I totally respect him. We're somewhere where I never thought we would be. But it's up to him. It, just, it needs to come from each of us. There's no more convincing on Just one more time to see if you're really gonna be me. We want to thank you guys again for showing up. We've been playing for about eight years or so, and uh, people in the establishment, in the industry, they never believed, they never, they never got us, but you guys always believed. <laughs> and we want to thank you so much for believing, for believing in music, that music doesn't need to be force-fed to you, that you can get it your own way.
teary-eyed up here. We love you too. There was a decorator with a heart of gold that likened him to all the stories he told. But that battle's won and lost to legends of old. He's a veteran in his own time. On the battlefield, he gained respectful fame. With many medals of brave for bringing straps to his name. He grew up here as soon as he could to cover the scars on his face. Now he's switched his men on. But on the evil red battle with the infantry and Jimmy Old Town was tossed in his sleep and wrestled with me. He awoke from the night to tell what he had seen. He walked slowly out of his tent. All the men held so with their chests in the air With the blood and the blood and the fire in their sins They put it in there, what an alley would fare The old Joe told them to go home He said, I have seen the others And I have discovered that this fight is not worth fighting Oh, and I've seen them others And I will no other to follow me where I'm going So you got no time to lose my young man, you must be living. Yeah, take a shower and shine your shoes. You got no time to lose my young man, you must be living. Go now, you are forgiven. Now the men stood fast with their guns on their shoulders, not knowing what to do with this contradictory work. The general said he would do his own dirty work and extend it over. They could go as they please, but not a man moved. Their eyes gazed straight ahead till one by one they stepped back and not a word was said. The old general was left with his own words echoing and he said, He never had to fight, he said, I have seen the others and I have discovered that this fight is not worth fighting. No, and I've seen them others and I will know. Well, you got no time to lose. You are young man, you must be 11. Go now, you are forgiven. in the drama, then you might, you might say, sadness, or you might, you know, like, believe in the immediacy of something ending. But I don't believe in that. You know, it's like the magician doesn't stop doing tricks, you know what I'm saying? It's like the magic, you gotta go on, man. So it will be, it will be what it is. And I'm proud and happy to to be here. Go now, you are forgiven. Go now, you are forgiven. Go now, you are forgiven. Go now. Go now, you are forgiven. Go now, you are forgiven. Go now, you are forgiven. Go. Go now, you are forgiven. Go now, you are forgiven. Go now, you are forgiven. Go. Go now, you are forgiven. Go now, you are forgiven. Go now, you are forgiven. Go.
traffic will probably be a mess along the Esplanade tonight as an estimated 100,000 people showed up for a free concert at the Hatch. The local band dispatched, but the crowd swelled to over 100,000 people. About 50 people crowds to the venue capacity and eventually began to fill out a band showed up for a free concert. concert. The concert at the Hatch shelter way more bands than expected. The band dispatch was playing together for the last time. But instead of 10,000 bands, the show attracted as many as 100,000. And the band tells us they were surprised at anyone by the crowd. State police are admitting they simply did not think the band would attract as many bands as they did. They did say, however, that the minute the crowd started to get large, extra forces were brought in to keep things under control. Or his mother's hand roll over him with endless water. Ten thousand bridges, show me, Father. Now I'm older, now I'm much older. And this weight can take me out to sea I feel the pull beneath my feet But I can see her, she's calling me I can feel her there I can feel her there Waiting for the fingers of the gray wave For his mother's hands Roll over him Show me, Father. share the stage with you. 